It's known that deep breathing helps you restore your chakras. But we're not here to talk about that. What is going on guys? Lazar here from Chakra UI and welcome to the first Design vs Dev Challenge video. In this series we are going to rebuild some awesome dribble shots by awesome fellow designers. If you're a designer or if you know someone who's a designer and would like to see their shots rebuilt, let us know in the comments below. So without further ado, let's go back to the studio and start the challenge. For the first challenge we're going to rebuild this beautiful chat interface by Denis Sergushkin. Big shout out to Dennis for letting us use his dribble shot. If you guys want to check it out, I'll leave a link in the description. So, let's get started. Let's create a new Next.js app using the with TypeScript example. We're gonna do a quick yarn dev to make sure there are no issues. Alright, now let's install the Chakra UI packages. Make sure to double check this command from the Chakra UI doc site. Now we're ready to open our project in Visual Studio Code. When using Chakra UI with Next.js, the first thing you want to do is override the app component. We can do that by creating an underscore app.tsx file into the pages directory. This is the file in which we're initializing the Chakra provider. If we start the app again, we'll see some visual changes. That means that Chakra UI has been successfully initialized. Just for the fun, let's add a simple button component in the index page. Before we proceed, let's do a quick cleanup. We're going to delete all of the components, the interfaces and utilities directories and the rest of the pages. If we look at the layout, we'll see the sections are stacked horizontally. So we'll use the horizontal stack for that. It's also a good idea to apply semantic HTML to those sections. Let's start building the layout. Initially, we'll add 5 empty flex components that we're going to build one by one. We'll set the max width of the nav section to 16 and add a grey 100 background. The two aside sections are going to have a max width of small, while the main section is going to take up the rest of the space. We'll also add a subtle right border to the first aside section and the main section. If we open the app, we can see the layout is slowly taking shape. Now we're ready to start working on the nav component. We can see that the items are aligned vertically and there's a space between the last two buttons. Let's create the navigation component into the components directory. We're going to wrap everything up in a vertical stack component and set its justify content property to space between. In order to separate the last button, we're going to wrap the top buttons in another vertical stack. As for the icons, we can use the React Icons package. Now that the package is installed, we can start importing the icons. Since they're just icon buttons, it's also a good idea to add tooltips on them. We should never forget to add an ARIA label to each button. We're going to put the last button outside of the second vertical stack so it gets pushed to the bottom. Let's go back to the index page and put our new component into the first flex. And there we go. We can see that the tooltips are working and the buttons are separated correctly. But there's still one thing missing and that's the logo at the top. For the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to copy paste the Chakra UI logo. Let's go and add it in the navigation component. Alright, it's looking good. With this, we're done with the navigation section and we're ready to move on to the next one. For the next section, we're going to use a vertical stack again. Let's start by creating a new directory into the components directory. We'll call it chat history. Let's create a chat history sidebar.tsx file, add a placeholder inside and replace that component back into the index page. Now we can focus on our custom avatar component. 
Luckily, Chakra UI comes with an avatar component that we can add a badge to it. But first, let's set up the sidebar layout. As we mentioned, we're going to use a vertical stack. The avatar component has a name property that serves as a fallback in case the image is not loaded. To make it simple, we're just going to use the name property and set the size to be to 2XL. That was really simple. We can now move on and use a heading component for the name. Then, in a horizontal stack, we'll add the icon buttons for the social links. We'll set the buttons variant to ghosts and the rounded property to full so they appear circular. Now we can add a divider. We'll wrap it in a box so we can leave a bit of padding on the side. Coming up next is the friends online section. We can use a horizontal stack with the justify content of space between for the header. We'll wrap the title in a heading component and the detail in a text component to achieve the visual difference. We can also use a horizontal stack for the friend section, but we'll set the overflow x property to auto so we can scroll it horizontally. Since we're only doing the UI, let's create a string array at the top for our friends lists. We can then map through it and return an avatar component for each friend. We're also going to use a tooltip to display the friend name, so let's move everything into a separate component. We'll call it user avatar. It'll accept a name string as a prop and we'll return an avatar with a badge wrapped with a tooltip. So now let's go back and replace the avatar with our new user avatar component and see how it looks like. Beautiful, now we can see our friends' names in the tooltip. Coming up next is the chat search bar and the conversation history. We'll use an ordinary input for the search and a list for the history. The search section is pretty straightforward. We're gonna add a heading first and then the input. And now it's time for the conversations. We'll use the list component from Chakra UI and the list item for each conversation. To keep our code tidy, let's create a new file for the chat row component. We're going to use the flex component, but also define the transition and the hover state. Since we're only doing the UI, we'll use an empty box component for the image and the hard-coded name and message. We're going to wrap the name and the message in a vertical stack. And since we're in a flex component, we're going to put the time text outside of the vertical stack. Now, since we're done, we can go back to the chat history sidebar and replace our placeholder with our newly created component. Let's create a few copies and go see what it looks like. It looks amazing. I love how the subtle hover effect brings life to it. This section should also scroll, so if we copy-paste the chat row a few times, we can see that in action. So next up is the chat section, the main one, and this one is pretty straightforward. Let's start by creating a new component for the chat section and replace it back into the index page. Now since we have that in place, we can start defining the layout. We'll use a flex component, although feel free to use a vertical stack in this case. To achieve the bottom border, we'll wrap the input into a horizontal stack and then add the border to it. We'll be adding some buttons on the side of the input, so that's why we're using the horizontal stack in this case. 
The next section looks exactly like Chakra UI's stat components, so we'll use that one to utilize the pre-made styles. And as you can see, it looks exactly like the design. To keep things simple, I'm gonna paste the dummy data for the chat component. We can now map through the messages and return a chat bubble for each message. Let's create a chat bubble component and let's define the props to accept a message that is string, a date send that string and a from field that will be either me or others. We're going to use the from field to apply custom styling to the user's messages and his friend's messages. The variable properties will be the bottom left and right radius and the chat bubble's background color. So the user's messages will have a blue background while the friend's messages will have a gray background. Also the alignment is different, so the user's messages are going to be aligned at the end while the friend's messages are going to be aligned at the start. Let's replace the messages with our chat bubble component and check it out. Now that's perfect. What's missing now is the message input at the bottom and the send button. We're gonna set the input's variant to unstyle to make it look like it's the whole section. Now we can add a simple icon button and we should be good to go. Now that looks amazing. And finally we have the last section, in which we have the shared files and links. Let's start by creating an empty chat files folder, export the default component and then replace it back into the index page. Now we're ready to start setting up the layout. I'm gonna use a flex component, but feel free to use a vertical stack in this case too. For the first section we're going to use a horizontal stack with a justify of space between. The next section is the same avatar section that we did before, so that's a good candidate to refactor it into a separate component. But in my case, I'm just going to fly through it. Alright, so the next section is the shared files section. And just like before, we're going to use a horizontal stack with a justify of space between. We're also going to use a variant text for the see all button. We're going to use a list component for the chat files and inside we're going to put our custom chat file components. The chat file component is going to be wrapped in the horizontal stack. We'll use an empty box for the placeholder image and we'll wrap the text inside of a vertical stack component. In a real world scenario, this component is going to take up some props, like the name of the file, the image, the date that's being sent, and the number of kilobytes. But since we're only doing the UI, we're going to hard code the values for now. We can now replace the new component and see how it looks like. Awesome, let's make a few copies. Coming up next is the shared links section, which looks exactly like the shared files section. So we're going to do pretty much the same here. I'm going to create a new chat link component, but feel free to reuse the chat file component and refactor it to accept some props. And when we're done, we can replace it back into the chat files lists. And that wraps up the initial layout. But now it's time to talk about responsiveness. If we open the app in an iPad, we can see that the chat is too narrow and the side sections are too wide. An easy solution for smaller screens would be to move these sections into their own drawers. Then we can add a couple of buttons around the search friends input so we can toggle them. So let's start refactoring and see how it looks like. 
We can use the responsive syntax for the max width and display of the two sections to hide the original ones. Now since they're gone, we can create the new drawer components. The props are going to have an isOpen boolean and an unclosed method. We already have the sidebars ready, so we're just going to wrap them into a drawer component. We can use the use disclosure hook from Chakra UI to control the state of each drawer separately. Since we're going to have two buttons in the chat component, we can define the events as props. So one for the chat history and one for the chat files. Now we can go back to the chat component and replace the first event with the value from the disclosure hook. And there we go. You can see that the chat history sidebar has turned into a drawer. But if we go back on desktop, we can see that the new button is gone and the sidebar remains as a sidebar. Now what's left to do is do the same for the chat files sidebar. And that wraps it up. Our layout is now pretty responsive for mobile, tablets and desktop. There are more things to be done to make the layout better, but I'm gonna leave them to you. So thank you for watching until the end. Don't forget to like and subscribe and if you want to see a certain dribble shot get rebuilt, place it down in the comments below. Thanks for watching.